In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, God's good people, and welcome to Catholic Meditation. Today is Monday, the 22nd of March, 2021. It is Monday of the fifth week of Lent, Church Year B. Catholic Meditation is always produced and brought to you by the Communications Service of the Diocese of Kumba, Cameroon. Osla Ajebesone is the producer. Remitus Elad, the webpage director. Behind the microphone for presentation, I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. It is always delightful having you at the other end. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the prophet Daniel, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, verses 15 to 17, verses 19 to 30, and verses 33 to 62. The psalm is taken from Psalm 23, and the response to the psalm is, Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. The gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 8, Verses 1 to 11. I read from the Gospel. At that time, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in their midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law Moses commanded us to stone such. What do you say about her? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come back to me 
The theme for today's meditation is Do not condemn others. God alone is judge. Do not condemn others. God alone is judge. Beloved in Christ, both readings of today have a common subject matter. They talk about women and the sin of adultery. But the narratives differ. In the first reading, a woman is accused falsely of committing adultery, whereas in the gospel, a woman is truly guilty of adultery as she was caught in the act. While in the first reading, the woman of the story is framed up for adultery, the woman in the gospel story pleads guilty of the sin. In Jewish times, adultery was considered the worst of sins and crimes a woman could commit. It was considered treason of the highest rank that merited such a great penalty as death by stoning. Now, you would ask why? And why was the law more severe on women? In fact, it was a law for women. A woman was considered the possession of her husband, and he owned her by right. She could not give herself, therefore, to another man, considering the fact that she was the possession of another. But the man was free to own as many possessions as he wanted. He had a right over his wife, but the right of that possession did not belong to the woman. So, the sin of adultery, according to Jewish law, was only for women. Because belonging to one man, she had given herself to another. But the man could not be accused of adultery. No, he was simply going after possessions. So you understand the reason and the bend why though they were caught in adultery, only the woman had to be stoned. Jesus made it even more severe when he said, Whoever looks at the woman lustfully is guilty of adultery. Confirm Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 28. So not only is the act itself adultery, just the mere thought of it. And he said so, including men, because the Jewish law favored men over women. So by Jesus' teaching, therefore, men too can be guilty of adultery, not only women, something hitherto unheard of. It was for adultery both women of our stories were accused and had to face their sentence. Let us pay our focus on the woman in the gospel story. Jesus changes everything. It was he who had said, just the very thought of it is adultery. Now, here was a woman who had committed the act itself but he discharges and acquits her. Now attention, Jesus was not promoting adultery, no. Neither was he legalizing it, no. He was not in support of promiscuity. We must understand the reason for his action and the lessons to learn. The woman had committed adultery, yes. She was guilty, yes. She deserved her punishment, yes too. But why did Jesus prevent it? That is, why did he prevent her from being stoned? Cast the first stone, he who has not sinned, so he said. By this, Jesus teaches that you have no right, no authority, and no justification to condemn a sinner if you are yourself a sinner. It does not matter. You may not have committed the same sin, but if you are yourself a sinner, you have no voice to condemn another. Therefore, cast the first stone, he who has no sin. Imperfection cannot condemn imperfection. Besides, in stoning the woman, they had set the man free, but he too was guilty of adultery. And so if the woman had to be stoned, the man had to be stoned as well. How easy it is and sweet to broadcast the sins of others. 
most of our conversations, beloved, if we are sincere, are about others and their sins. But we too are sinners. If you were given a stone to cast if you had no sin, would you? But how often we condemn others. She has done this. He is this and that. The stories of others are always on our lips about the bad things they have done. By telling them to cast a stone, the one who had no sin, Jesus meant they had no power to condemn because they are all sinners as well in different and varying degrees. Judgment and condemnation is left to God alone because he is all holy and without sin. Only he can cast a stone. So if you cast a stone, it means you are holy. And are you truly holy? Yet, though he had the power, Jesus did not cast the stone. No one has stoned you, he said to the woman, meaning no one has condemned you. Of course, they realized just how sinful they are. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more, Jesus concluded. You see, those who should never condemn are those always who rather condemn. And the one who has the power to condemn, that is God, rather discharges and acquits. It is true, beloved. See how often we who offend others are always, always very offended when someone offends us. God, who should rather condemn, despite the many times we offend him, is the one who is so full of mercy and compassion. How contradictory. Dear friends, this is the true litmus test for holiness. You don't need to go far to see how holy you are. If you want to know how holy you are, evaluate yourself on the degree of condemnations and stones you throw at others. Holy people never stone others. Do you know why? They rather focus on themselves. They see their weakness. They see their need of God. They see their need for God. They don't have time to condemn others because they are themselves sinners. But I tell you, the worst sinners are those who cast the greatest stones. Dear friends, let us ask ourselves today, how many stones do we throw at others? Are you holy to throw a stone at another sinner? Therefore, two lessons to learn. Let us use two letters, S and H, to stand for the two lessons to learn. The letter S, which symbolizes shun. Shun condemnation of others. Shun casting stones on others for their mistakes. Because the second lesson, which is the second letter H, you are not holy yourself. You are only striving for holiness. And because you are striving for holiness, a truly holy person who looks at themselves and see their own sins will rather pray for other sinners and not cast a stone at them. Those are the two lessons for today. S and H. Shun condemning others and strive to be holy. And to be holy, you would look at yourself, see your sins, see how you struggle with yourself, and therefore you will pray for other sinners. That is the assignment that follows the lessons of today. One, make it a constant duty, beloved, never to throw stones at others. And if others bring stories to you of the sins of others, change the conversation. Shy away from it. Learn never to condemn others. And the second assignment, pray not only for yourself, pray too for others. Because as you struggle with yourself, so too they struggle with themselves. It doesn't mean we condone sin. It doesn't mean we condone mistakes. Rather than judge and condemn, we should rather pray and admonish with gentility because you are yourself liable to sin. Dear Lord, we thank you for always loving us and forgiving us despite our many sins. Give us the grace never to condemn others, to strive for holiness by praying for ourselves and praying for other sinners. Amen. Catholic meditation with me, Father blessed. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We wish each and every one of you a blessed new week. Do not throw stones at others. Pray for yourself and pray for other sinners.